climate change costs money. And what would cost the most money to Canadians at all is his do-nothing climate plan. Newsflash, when the Toronto subway gets flooded, it costs money. Newsflash, when fire forest fires hit communities across this country, it costs Canadians money to rebuild. When you have droughts that hit farmers and, and agriculturists across this country, it costs money. What doesn't cost money is putting money in eight out of ten of the money of, uh, of Canadians' pockets with the Canada Carbon Rebate to support their families and fight climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister just proved my point. His tax doesn't stop floods, fires, or droughts. Yeah. All it does is create more poverty. This also from a high-flying, high-taxing, high-carbon hypocrite who flew 92,000 kilometers in a fuel-guzzling tax-funded private jet while he taxes single moms and seniors for heating their homes. Now, carbon tax Carney wants him to put the tax back on home heating oil. Will he reject carbon tax Carney and instead allow Canadians to choose to axe the tax? <laughs> Welcome, AC Gang. This is Talks with Kenny. I'm a contributor for Authentic Conservatism. And I wanted to do a video on this reaction you saw from the intro. Uh, we were talking about uh, climate change. We're going to talk about climate change. And I'm going to use this debate between Justin Trudeau and Pierre, uh, leader of the opposition party in Canada, to highlight everything I see as wrong with climate change. Now, I always equate climate change to a type of secular religion. Bear with me. Conservatives get lambastic all the time about how they should, they're climate change deniers, they're doing this and they're doing that. And I don't believe that's the case. I think many conservatives just see that, hey, what's the point of climate change? Climate change every, four, uh, every year is called the four seasons, right? And I think what conservatives try to articulate and the many people on the left dismiss is the fact that many conservatives believe that a lot of the problems that the climate changers push and run on are exaggerated problems that has no actual uh, they're not actually negatively, negatively detrimental to the life of people in these countries. But these climate change approaches, these climate change policies will hurt people around the world, especially in Canada, America. I say all that to say that if you think this destroys the planet and this is saving it, you must be a you might be a moron. Because look at all those solar panels across those Greenland fields, and it still won't produce as much energy as fuel, fossil fuels. And the reason why fossil fuels is responsible for majority, if not 80%, I think, of infrastructure around the world is because fossil fuel is more reliable than solar and wind. And the fact that we having a government, uh, an attempt to try to make us all conform, tax us for driving our cars, taxing us for uh, driving our gas-powered cars, trying to push us into a product that we don't want to buy because high uh, electric cars are very expensive, but yet the government's out here trying to make mandates where you can't drive uh, fossil fuel vehicles anymore is because in a, in reality, there's, there's a negative incentive there is that many people are using the climate change as a type of grift, a, a, a type of hustle to justify either government spending or you giving them money Let's take a look. Does the world need carbon taxes? No, of course the world doesn't need a carbon tax. They're talking about a CO2 tax, and CO2 is actually good for the world, so people ought to be encouraged to make more of it. <laughs> so why, why do you think they're pushing this idea of a CO2 tax, then, if CO2 is good for the world? Well, it's a combination of uh, uh, people who've been misinformed badly, uh, People who need to feel virtuous, they don't believe in anything anymore, so now they've got something to believe in to save the planet. And then it's the opportunists who are making a good living out of frightening everybody and uh, sucking money out of the common man, you know, to push idiotic uh, energy solutions on them that make everyone poorer and, and provide less reliable energy, less affordable energy. So there's nothing good about it. It's the same evil fanaticism that's plagued mankind since uh, we began. 
And suppose the advocates of uh, climate change hysteria and carbon dioxide taxes, suppose they get their way. Um, how would the world look different in five or 10 years than it does today? Well, I mean, it will be uh, like other totalitarian systems run amok. You know, I hope it won't be as bad as uh, Cambodia, but it could be. But it could easily be like the Soviet Union, you know, you could have 40 years of misery before the whole system finally collapses. Uh, so we'll see. We'll, let's hope that there are enough people of uh, common sense in the world. Uh, this is an especial uh, uh, task for the developed countries because that's where the problem is the worst. And uh, So I use this to all say about this climate change stuff is that Essentially, my argument or my angle here is that many people are using climate change as a means to enrich themselves, to gain more power and control over your everyday people's lives, to continue justifying regulation. And it's hard not to see it that way because of the fact of the cost. You spent all that money, you, you spent all this money for climate change and all this, these initiatives, and you still get flooded, causing more problems. So you made the people poor, and as you saw from the clip that I just showed you with that physicist explaining that, yo, you're just going to give 40 years of misery, and that's what's going to happen. You can't light up your stove. You're going to be cold in the winter, hot in the summer because there's not enough energy. They're going to be rolling blackouts because of the grid. You know, end of the day, if you measure the amount of power we use in our everyday lives, we don't think about it much, but in your everyday life, Solar and wind are too, are, are too unreliable because what happens when the wind stops blowing? The sun stops shining. It's been raining for a couple of weeks. There won't be enough energy produced to maintain the current energy usage. And the only, one, the only energy source that can cheaply and effectively power our country is fossil fuels and second, nuclear energy. Not solar and wind. Solar and wind is like 5% of the energy infrastructure. And even when these energy infrastructure is being powered by solar and wind, their backup is still fossil fuels. So what are we doing? Like, how can you justify government spending? You can't. And this is why I'm saying this is, a, is kind of like a religion. It operates like a religion. And many of these climate changers have faith in it, right? And they don't care how much it costs to do all this stuff. And I'm from the U.S., you know, so uh, I'm going to talk more from a U.S. perspective. But if you look at this clip I'm about to show you, it essentially shows you the cost of why many American conservatives do not want to put a dime towards climate change, and it's glorious. Let's take a look. $50 trillion, as some of your colleagues have testified, to become carbon neutral by 2050. How much is that going to lower world temperatures? So every country around the world needs to get its act together. Our emissions are about 13% of global emissions Yeah, but if right you could now. answer my question, if we spend $50 trillion to become carbon neutral in the United States of America by 2050, you're the Deputy Secretary of Energy, Give me your estimate of how much that is going to reduce world temperature. So, so first of all, it's a net cost. Um, it's what uh, benefits we're having from getting our act together and reducing all of those climate benefits. We're seeing. Let me ask again. Maybe I'm being. Right now. Maybe I'm not being clear. If we spent fifty trillion dollars to become carbon neutral by two thousand and fifty in the United States of America, how much is that going to reduce world temperatures? This is a global problem, so we need to reduce our emissions, and we need to do everything we can. How much, if we do our part, countries. is it going to reduce? So world we're temperatures? For, we're thirteen percent of global emissions. You don't know, right do you? So we're thirteen percent of. If global you know, why won't you we, tell me? If we went to zero, that would be thirteen percent. You don't know, do you? You just want us to spend fifty trillion dollars, and you don't have the slightest idea whether it's going to reduce world temperatures. You're the deputy secretary of the Department of Energy and you're advocating we spend trillions of dollars to seek carbon neutrality and you can't, and this isn't your money and my money, it's taxpayer money, and you can't tell me how much it's going to lower world temperatures? You notice how like a lot of these climate changers, they use like these like doomsday kind of rhetoric to really try to scare people. They really try to fear people. And you wonder why many young people today have something called climate anxiety. I don't have it. I'm 28 years old. I don't have climate anxiety. But then again, I did drop out of college halfway through. So a part of me thinks that college is literally conditioning the minds of the youth to be concerned about climate change. And too long in politics, many people have been voting based on intentions, based on the intentions of, oh, they passing this bill because they, the intention is to reduce climate emissions. 
But many conservatives or many people who tend to be conservative or who, who are willing to vote conservatives in some level think about, OK, but what is the outcomes? Is this approach actually going to give the outcomes that it says it will? And that was the clip that I just showed you, highlighted before. It's like, hey, you want us, you're advocating for us to go down this route, to do this approach. Would this approach actually give us the outcomes that we're looking for? If you're unsure, then why the hell are you advocating for it? Because we're going to spend a lot of money going down this path. And you better be damn sure or have a high probability that the outcomes will be achieved by going down this process. And for too long, our policies, especially by many politicians around the world, they've been running on emotions. And I believe that this is a manipulative tactic to really get consensus across the board from the American citizens and to almost like fear, using fear to justify, yeah, this is why you should go along with the climate change agenda, right? And this is where the climate change anxiety comes from because many young people are thinking that in 12 years they're going to die, right? But what many young people don't seem to know, especially Gen Z and Gen Alpha coming up behind them, is that... These climate change, disaster scenarios, narratives have been around for years, longer than I've been born, since the 60s, I believe. We're going to puff up in blue smoke in the 2000s. These people have made numerous predictions, and every single prediction they have put out has been wrong. They're like 0 for 70, if I remember correctly. Imagine that. Someone's trying to tell you, oh, my God, we're going to die if we don't do this government spending. We need to get our act together before it's too late. And they have a track record of being nada, zilch, right. 70% of their, the 70 predictions that they articulated, these climate change people said, if we don't do nothing, uh, uh, the islands is going to sink. Miami is going to be underwater. Still waiting for Miami to be underwater. And anyway, isn't Miami a man-made island anyway? So it wasn't there originally in the first place. But, you know, I digress. I think that's Miami Beach I'm talking about. But this is some of the narratives that, Many people in the media constantly push. And this is what I highlight a lot on my personal channel. I have a personal channel, Talks with Kenny. You can subscribe if you want. But on my personal channel, I talk about this a lot, about how our institutions that's responsible for distributing knowledge to the masses, they inconvenient, they conveniently leaves out alternative perspectives on the whole climate change disaster narrative. And they only allow these experts who traditionally always lean left. I just... I'll point out that many people in college are leftist, Democrat. They tend to agree with this stuff. And I believe a bias is being played in the admitting knowledge and information that goes counter to a narrative that many people on the left want to portray. And this is one of my biggest problems with many people on the left is that I believe that a part of me feels like they're trying to almost trick me into agreeing or prescribing to their solutions and then once you commit to that solution and, you, and then we get to the tail end of that solution, a.k.a. we, fit, we spend $50 trillion to eliminate climate um, emissions to be net zero, then you find out that we're not really net zero, but we spend, we already spent the $50 trillion. It, it, it always comes off cross to me as it's a ploy to trick you into agreeing with their, to their approach, and I believe something more nefarious is behind that. And a part of me is like, hey, you guys want to use this to enact socialism. You want to use this to get more regulation and control. Hey, you want this money to enrich your buddies that voted, that helped fundraise and voted you in, and you're going to get some type of kickback. This gets, gets my mind turning about, hey, what other incentives does someone have to push something that is not quite proven, where many people, many of the same um, types, uh, environmentalists and all these people, push these false predictions where they haven't been right a single time yet, for some reason, they still have credibility in the eyes of our government. I wonder why. And this is some questions I think you should be asking yourself as a conservative. But that's all I have for you guys today. I appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Authentic Conservative channel. I really appreciate you guys watching the end of the video, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace.